Hey there, this is Johnny Moneto, and we can say this is the second part of a two part mini series uh, about tier 6 carrier gameplay. I had the other video a um, couple of days ago, and uh, there I explained basically the decision making process, which means that you, uh, you try to find out how you can be effective. In the game as a carrier not the details how you actually do the drops but more or less uh, which targets are you going to choose at which time uh, so that you can have a maximum impact on the battle uh, that was a however a tier 6 uh, slash 5 game you were high tier in a tier 6 carrier and I promised also to show one battle where you are low tier and here it is a tier 8 game on Land of Fire, one of the uh, one of the biggest maps in the game, and um, yeah, you can see four destroyers, uh, two cruisers, five battleships. Um, not heavy a, a, a tier eight, but at least some of them. I sorry, I didn't find a more a tier eight populated game from my archives. So um, I start with the rockets for two reasons. Uh, usually it's standard to start with the rocket planes. First of all, in the beginning you want to scout a little bit and the rocket planes are the fastest plane type that you have, so you can cover the most ground in short time. And second of all, if, uh, if somebody's coming to the caps, it's usually destroyers and the rockets work best on destroyers. That's the reason why usually you start with this plane type. There are a few maps under certain circumstances where I use torpedo bombers first, but this is maybe slightly advanced gameplay already, so if you're not sure what to do exactly, start with the rockets, that's the way to go. First I go to B, straight ahead. Usually the DDs mirror in the spawn so we have one at a one at b and two at c so i expect also the enemy to have one at a one at b and two at c and i want to give my dd at b the advantage that i will scout the area for him to see if there's anybody coming if i would sc spot a dd here he could smoke up and go daka 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 and i could keep him spotted but there is nobody here, so he knows that he's relatively safe, he just has to take care of the rocket planes from the carrier. I move over to A because I think that the destroyer from B went over to A, and he must be here somewhere. So I'm scouting here, and yeah, sure enough, here she is, Asashio, and the Asashio is a special case destroyer uh, when you're in a tier 8 battle, and you have an Asashio on the enemy team, and you have like we have here, plenty of battleships in the team, then you want to find the Asashio and harass and possibly even kill her as fast as possible. Because the Asashio has this 20 km deep water torps which can only hit you yourself and the carrier and the battleships and they are very hard to spot. They basically come without any warning and they hit like a truck. So. This is really dangerous for your battleships, and if you want to protect your battleships, the Asashio of all the destroyers in the game is your main target, and I'm so happy that I found her first. So now my battleships have an idea of where Torps might be coming from. At least they know the angle. I cannot spot the Torps, obviously, but at least they know the angle. So, after this uh, rocket plane squad is done, I looked uh, at the Richelieu because she's moving forward here on the one line and she's uh, pushing into A, coming around and it's sad that none of our battleships is actually going there to counter her, but um, our Benson is in danger of being uh, yeah, spotted and maybe killed, so I go here to a Richelieu to harass her and uh, the best plane type to work on a Richelieu, you have to see how I have to fly around the flag cloud is our uh, torpedo bombers. Do not use AP bombers on her unless you don't have anything else because the ratio use citadel is very well hidden and you cannot penetrate it so you you will not make big damage with your AP dive bombers. Torpedo bombers are a much better choice here. Uh, it's a tier 8 ship which has also slight support from 
destroyers and smoke claw in the in the smoke so my planes do not last too long uh, i do not thin out my squad on this particular occasion the ratio is actually rather weak as a tier 8 battleship uh, with her AA so if I use eight planes for the strike I'm pretty sure that I can make four uh, sorry I can get four torpedoes in the water yes and I can make two strikes therefore and four planes will just be killed alternatively I can thin out the squad to four planes strike with two planes lose another two planes in the process and then I have to come back but the ratio use AA is not so strong that I have good chance of getting uh, four turps on her. Then I see that our uh, sea cap side is under pressure. Uh, we already lost the destroyer there. Our tier 8 battleship in North Carolina went in for unknown reasons and two enemy destroyers were lingering around there so I thought uh, I'd give my North Carolina some protection come with rocket planes to harass this destroyers Icarus smokes up so I go for uh, Akizuki of course our Anshan I, I have no idea what the Anshan was doing here in the middle of the enemy fleet with a carrier in the game this is just suicide but okay, hey, everybody as he likes, right? So I, I harass those destroyers a little bit, but now I'm in a dilemma because both sides actually need my help evenly, yeah? Here it's not looking good on the A side and on the C side it's also not looking good. A side we now lose Ismail. <sighs> yeah, sure, why not? Um, so I was thinking which way to go because both ideas are equally great, but then the uh, Benson in chat asks for help. And if you have something like this, usually you can ignore players telling you what to do in your carrier. But if somebody, it was a 50 50 choice. And if somebody displays some common sense by not dying here and already asking nicely, okay, I go and help him. And uh, I help him by checking rocket planes. I don't have a full squad yet. I only have five planes. That's not so nice, but he asked for help. So I'm coming over here to help. I want to go for Asashio first because she has weak AA. But uh, she's dead already. Uh, Mahan would be the next target, but of course she's covered by a battleship and a cruiser. Both are tier seven. Um, so my planes will not last too long I take one drop press F and take the next squad the other three planes which were still in the squad will just die uh, there's really or if I'm lucky they're coming back actually one of those planes survived so out of these five planes that I had I will get three back how nice um, the others are just dead there's nothing I can do for them Okay, so next, uh, yeah, there was battleship Nagato here, also Japanese battleships, notoriously poor AA. Uh, basically, it's uh, almost, I mean, there are battleships on tier 5 which have better AA than Nagato on tier 7. Naja, at least at tier 6 you'll find better battleships. So uh, I can go there, I'll take torp bombers. You can also take AP dive bombers, just the same, but torp bombers are a little bit more reliable give more consistent damage so I take the top bombers instead to strike her because we want to reduce of course the enemy's amount of guns and the Nagato's big caliber guns are the biggest threat to my cruisers around here so, while the Mahan and the Shores are not such big threats the drop was not perfect because too close, so she only needs one torpedo but gets finished off nevertheless. However, I already initiated the attack. I have to wait for it to turn around. And still, I, I have some torpedo bombers left, so I go for the shores instead. But since I have to do the turn here, my angle of attack will not be so great. In the meantime, we kind of lose this flank. We see another suiciding destroyer, Ölan, going in. Sure, why not? Why, why wouldn't you go with your small little destroyer without a smoke and a carrier in the game? Why wouldn't you go into the hornet's nest here? Right? Right. 
but at least he's trading at least something a tier 8 destroyer for a tier 8 destroyer why not so the situation is now as follows uh, we have four ships here and one fuso the fuso is isolated uh, with the carrier in the game close to the enemy strong fleet uh, is of course bound to die very fast probably without achieving anything my idea here is to help my four ships to get rid of these two ships as fast as possible so that then we can uh, go towards B and C to face the remainders of the enemy fleet. So um, let's take on the uh, yeah. Well, whatever comes first, I, I will. I'm prepared to go for Mahan as well as for Shores. I take the rocket planes because they work well on both ships. Shores is already dead. That's good. So Mahan it is. She has the smoke. But she is leaving the smoke here, just to take a small look. And the torps from our Benson are golden, because this, these torps do not hit, but they force the Mahan to sail outside of her smoke. Everybody can see her, because I'm spotting her, and she is dead. So we dealt with those two very quickly. You see, uh, this is another thing you can do as a carrier. You don't even have to attack yourself sometimes. You just go there, provide the spotting. Um, and your team can take care of the threat. I still have a full rocket squad, so the next thing, uh, Icarus was spotted, of course the Icarus is topping the Fuso, and since the Fuso displays little knowledge of the game, she goes down immediately. Um, the Icarus would be the logical next thing to strike with the rockets and if i think i'm out of fighter planes already here otherwise i would have dropped a fighter on the on top of the smoke but additionally i see a very low health new mexico and if you have rocket planes you can strike the superstructure of the new mexico to kill her off when she's on this low health so I go there immediately to take out these guns and this threat from my team. Of course, we also do not want her to repair and get some of her HP back. This is a rather easy kill. Then Icarus is spotted, but Amalfi has already moved up and kills her off. So we have reduced another threat very well. Somehow it feels like this is teamwork that we are working together, I'm providing spotting, I'm providing a little bit of damage, but my team is also doing its thing, so um, it feels actually pretty good. The next thing now, what you have to consider, I still have the rocket planes, and basically there are two ships which I can strike. Uh, one is the Prince Eugen, which I'm going for, and the other one was the New Mexico, which was last spotted here in the north. However, the New Mexico takes a long time to kill because she's resilient against torpedo bombers, because she has a good torpedo protection. Uh, she's completely resilient against AP bombers, because uh, I, the Citadel is not possible to penetrate. So it takes a long time to kill her, and the Prince Eugen, even though she's a tier 8 cruiser and has a repair kit, so she can heal up some HP, and she has a fighter consumable, still is the easier target to strike. I could have taken AP bombs here, but I go for the more reliable uh, torpedo planes. And since she's also under pressure from the rest of our fleet a little bit, well, I mean, halfway I'll strike her with torpedoes I I don't care about the fighters they they will kill three of my planes that was a three fighter squad so I lose three planes myself still I get two full torpedo strikes off total of four torpedoes and that is enough to kill her so again, one threat removed. At this point, it doesn't matter so much that I use planes. It's just more important to kill the ship. So now we have a ship advantage, a point advantage, and a cap advantage, and we just need to hold on to that. So now it's just the New Mexico and the Queen Elizabeth. Um, the New Mexico, as I said, resilient to a lot of things. Rocket planes will deal with her when you hit the superstructure, but um, it takes time. Queen Elizabeth, however, not such a good torpedo belt and not such a good citadel, not so well armored, so I can get uh, citadel damage on her with the dive bombers, not every time, 
but not here, but on the next drop I will get a Citadel hit, so that's why I go for the Queen Elizabeth. I thought my team would go for the New Mexico instead, but uh, they opted to all come down here and help me with the Queen Elizabeth. Focus fire, always good, we just want to remove these threats. Yeah, and that's basically the game. So uh, I think I might add a little bit, I, I think I will show you a little bit of training room, how to work against a mess, ah, no, Massachusetts I cannot show you because it's a premium ship. Um, how to work against some other tier 8 battleships with good AA and possibly also some cruisers. I think I will set up a scenario where we have several tier 8 ships together and how to strike with the tier 6 carrier into such a AA nest. But um, otherwise you saw that uh, dealing with these higher tier ships is not much different than dealing with the other ships because uh, you just have to avoid a little bit more flag clouds. This is something that you can practice, uh, even in co-op, which I highly recommend. And otherwise, uh, yeah, manage your planes a little bit, try to get some knowledge which planes can do which kind of damage on which ship. Um, basically, you just have to know your AP planes sometimes are not able to citadel enemy ships. And if once you know this, then you're golden. Yeah, we will. Uh, next stop, we will go to the training room here. This battle will end by just killing off the Queen Elizabeth, which will give us enough points to reach the 1000 mark, and we will win this battle with quite a decent result 90,000 damage, two kills, and a nice patch of teamwork here. Nicely done. Shall we just wait for the kill and the battle to end, and then we move over? To the training room. Come on, kill her. There you go. So welcome to the bonus section of the game. This is the training room, I promised you. Bonus section of the game, no, bonus section of the video. Uh, the training room I set up in such a way that there are three T8 ships with good to decent AA. Cleveland, Edinburgh, this is no joke, this is what you can face at tier 8. And North Carolina, uh, here in the stock configuration, um, so the AA is not quite as strong, could be a little bit better. Could be a little bit better. But it should be enough to demonstrate, um, to show you that you can also attack tier 8 ships, even if they're clustered, and even if uh, their AA is working combined um, and for this reason we thin out the squad I only want to demonstrate this so I'm using torpedo bombers right away and I will try to go in and have a strike I sent home four planes already oh, there's the Edinburgh North Carolina I sent him home four planes already because they will just die I go in I will try to avoid these flag clouds a little bit get the strike off, there you go, and immediately recall the squad. Now I'm not saying this is the best strike, but good enough for the Edinburgh, for sure. Um, and that's that's the basic principle here, so uh, again we will thin out our uh, squad. Now I have an odd number of planes, so uh, instead of four I will just have three planes remaining. One. Uh, this this part of the squad is always acting as a scapegoat. Uh, these planes you will just lose. They are to be fired upon, but these are actually the ones which uh, will drop the torpedoes. So you cannot go in with two only, because then you will lose your attack, the, your planes that will drop the actual ordnance. So uh, you need a little bit extra in these buffers to protect your planes that will do the damage. But the other planes actually you don't need and you can send home to have them ready for the next strike again. If you go in with a full squad, uh, you will make it in. Ouch. No avoidance here and we'll drop off as fast as possible from long distance. Yeah, that didn't work out with the flag cloud quite as well, so I dropped from a longer distance to still have my planes available. Um, if you go in with all the planes, you will just go in, drop 
two torpedoes like I do now, but you will just lose the rest of your planes. Uh, if you try to fly through, turn around, you will just lose all the planes. There's absolutely nothing to prevent this. And maybe, maybe I should actually show this to you that this will happen. But I will, I will show with a different set of to um, planes. I will use the dive bombers for that on the next run. We'll just go down to three planes again. Oh. Best is always to have three or four planes. Only if you see that, that three or four planes are not enough, then you need to have five planes available. So here's Edinburgh, Cleveland, they're all together. See, now the Edinburgh is fighting me, but I can just go through here. And this is what you do when you fight against a cluster of tier 8, battle, uh, tier eight ships with good AA. Thin out the squad, dive in time, dive underneath, try to let the flag clouds go in, and forget about the rest of the planes. They're not important anymore. So now I will just demonstrate what it looks like, the, the uh, what it looks like when you go in with a full squad and try to make a drop and circle around and make a second drop. And the AP bombers are almost as resilient as the torpedo bombers, so this is quite comparable with each other. However, with the AP bombers, I have to stay in, in, on some altitude. But almost the same, I just lose two planes before I can make the drop. And now, it, that doesn't matter, but now I will try to go around. And you see how I just get shredded. And that's basically it. And I will not make it. The planes are just gone. Bam. That's it. So um, thin out your squad, go in, always make a one drop attack, immediately recall your squad. Uh, therefore, don't take too many planes with you, otherwise you will just lose them very fast. And this is how you can attack your tier 8 and clusters of AA ships. Okay, I hope this helps. We conclude our video, uh, our small series for tier 6 carrier gameplay. I hope it was helpful to you and uh, catch you later.